Hi, Russ of Aquarium X Pets here. I get a lot of questions about the best isopods for specific bioactive enclosures. Today, we'll focus on isopods for humid enclosures with low ventilation and moist substrates, such as the enclosures used for dart frogs, many other amphibians, some reptiles, and various invertebrates. The first isopod I will bring up is Trichoranotomentosa, the dwarf white isopod. This tropical species was one of the first to be used in dart frog enclosures back in the 1990s, and with good reason. Because they are a tropical species, they thrive in humid setups with moist substrates. They also happen to require very little ventilation. They are fast breeders in such conditions, especially in warmer enclosures. This species is all the more prolific due to the fact that Trichorhinotomentosa reproduces by parthenogenesis, which means that each individual produces tiny clones of itself without the need for a male. Small predators, such as dart frogs, will eat some of the dwarf whites, but since only one individual is needed to found an entire colony, the population tends to be rather resilient. Larger predators tend to ignore the small and somewhat secretive isopod so it can go about its janitorial duties undisturbed. Another good species for a high humidity and low ventilation enclosure is Trichorina biocellata, known as the jungle micropod, the dwarf purple, or the Costa Rican purple. This species is similar in many respects to the dwarf white, though it reproduces sexually and seems a little less likely to play dead. It does well in similar humid moist setups. Before we go into some more isopod species that can do well in moist setups, I'd like to thank my patrons at Patreon. Supporting the YouTube creators that you enjoy can take many forms. The fact that you're watching this video right now is a very welcome form of support. If you feel like taking it a step further, you can check out the link I'll put at the end of this video and in the description and pledge as little as a dollar a month. It may not seem like a lot, but if a lot of people give a little, it makes a big difference in the variety and quality of content creators like me are able to offer. Thank you, patrons. You have my gratitude. And now back to isopod species that can flourish in humid enclosures with low ventilation. Porcelio scaber is another species that was widely used with great success in the dart frog hobby as a cleanup crew species long before the explosion of popularity in bioactive enclosures outside of the dart frog hobby. This species is still used a lot today with dart frogs and other species. The orange morph was the first color morph to be widely used, but any morph of the species will do. Most dart frog species specialize in very small prey, so they won't or can't eat adult Porcelio scaber. This allows the P. scaber population to continue functioning as a cleanup crew in the enclosure, but the frogs do pick off some of the small juvenile isopods, lending some variety to their diet, which also helps prevent the isopod population from reaching plague proportions. Kind of a win-win from the keeper's point of view. It's worth noting that Porcelio scaber is a species that responds fairly vigorously to protein sources, so they're probably not a great choice as a cleanup crew for sensitive invertebrates, for example. Atlantosha floridana is an isopod species which naturally occurs in Florida, as well as parts of Central and South America. This species, not surprisingly, is well suited to moist, humid enclosures. It's considerably larger than the two dwarf species just mentioned, but it is still a small isopod and is undoubtedly the fastest moving species I have ever kept. Hard to film, too. It's quite prolific and is an underutilized species in humid setups. I mentioned Porcelio dilatatus, the giant canyon isopod, in my video on isopods for arid enclosures. So you might be surprised to hear me mention that species here, but I do so with good reason. They're an incredibly adaptive, uh, tolerant species. They can handle low ventilation, they're not very picky about having a moisture gradient, and if you need something in a humid enclosure that is a rather secretive burrower during the day, but that comes out ready to clean up at night, this is a pretty great choice. This species is probably best avoided as a cleanup crew with invertebrates that pupate, or other sensitive species, as it does like its protein. Yet another versatile isopod that I mentioned in my video on isopods for arid setups, and deserves a spot here, is Silisticus convexus, the curly or teardrop isopod. These small to medium isopods are very adaptable. They seem to thrive just as well in moisture setups with low ventilation as they do in more arid situations. In my experience, they tend to burrow quickly when disturbed, so this may give them an edge in an enclosure with something that could take an interest in eating them. Some of you may be surprised to see that I haven't mentioned Porcelionidae prunosus, 
the wild type of which is known as the powder blue isopod, in this video. Though I think it is an absolutely fantastic cleanup crew species that I have used for years, in my experience it tends to prefer at least moderate ventilation as well as access to both moist and drier areas. In other words, a moisture gradient. It's a pretty hardy species, so I wouldn't be surprised if some of you are keeping it in moist, low ventilation enclosures successfully. I just don't think that such environments are 100% ideal for that species. But if you've had a different experience, please let me know in the comments. Now that I've offered some isopod options for your low ventilation humid enclosures with moist substrates, I'd like to share two best practices for introducing isopods as a cleanup crew into a bioactive enclosure containing potential predators. Number one, if you have a reptile or amphibian that is likely to view the isopods as a snack, give them a best possible chance. When you introduce the isopods, try to do it at a time of day when your herps are least active and cover the isopods up when you introduce them with leaf litter or something similar immediately. So out of sight, out of mind. Number two, if at all possible, keep a backup culture of the isopods you introduce. If you have herps that are snacking on the cleanup crew, you may need to reseed it occasionally. So keeping a backup culture, breeding and producing isopods uh, will help keep the population in your bioactive enclosure robust enough to do the job. Are there any other isopods that I didn't mention that you feel deserve a place on this list? If so, please let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Friday with live streams on Wednesdays. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then tap the bell for notifications all so you don't miss my next video.